Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Sportsman's Warehouse, the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, and Avery Superstore. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. Is on this the uh, September the 28th. Uh, yes, it is September, not July the 28th, which it's felt like for uh, <laughs> since, uh, particularly since I got back from Montana. It was 45 when I left Missoula, 95 when I left, got back to Memphis, and uh, it's been something else. Uh, we've been talking a little bit uh, uh, crappie fishing. We've talked to uh, uh, a little bit about what Vanishing Paradise is, and I know that Mike Buckler knows what that is. Yes, and, he does. Uh, uh, Bill Cooks. Oh, yeah. Bill Cooksey is sitting in, as he normally does as a co-host on the fourth Saturday. And, of course, this is Bonus bonus Wong, we call it. Uh, Ron Wong is Good with morning, us. Everybody. Ron is with us uh, as the other co-host. And, uh, uh, and we have two guys on the line. It takes two. Now, one's the, uh, the official the mouthpiece. The other one is the interpreter. So uh, I'm not sure which one is which here. But, uh, <laughs> hey, we've had Matt, Matt Simcock. He is a... Uh, the man in charge of the Hunter, Hunt, Hunters for Hungry program for our good friends at the Tennessee Wildlife Federation. And, of course, uh, we couldn't do a segment uh, without doing the man who's in charge of the Tennessee Wildlife Federation here, and that's our good friend Mike Butler. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Larry. How you doing? We're doing great. And uh, I, wanted, I wanted to talk, and, and, Mike, I know you guys are involved in so many things. I don't, I don't You keep Christine is working hard. What, is she getting a bonus for all these press releases? I mean, you're working that girl to death here now. <laughs> yeah, she, no, she's just good. She is she's really, really I, good. I'm going to say that on the radio, that she is good, because I'm getting information, uh, and we want to get it on the radio as soon as we can, uh, and we'll touch on a couple of those other things, but we want to talk about the Hunters for the Hungry program. And I know, Matt, you handle that. Uh, but, Mike, uh, I've got to ask you first, uh, how important is this program to the Federation? Well, it, it's incredibly important for about three or four different reasons. Number one, um, and, and Matt is, is our expert on the program, so I'm going to defer to him on some of the, on the, all the details, but, you know, Hunters are generous people, and they they uh, you know they want to give back to their communities, and this is a way that makes it easy for them to do so. It helps feed hungry families in need, which is something that a lot of people are very concerned about. And it also provides an extra outlet so that you have a way to manage uh, deer populations a little more efficiently in areas where you may need to take a few extra does or bucks to to uh, balance your herd out. So it, it provides opportunity, it provides ease of, of use so that nothing's wasted, and it also makes sure that that um, hunters are out there participating and supporting their communities. And, Matt, I know you've been in charge of this program. How long now? Yeah, about 12 years now. About 12 years wow. now, and uh, mm. uh, done a lot of great work. Uh, I, I don't know if you've compiled all the the figures, but listen to this, folks. One deer provides as many as 168 meals. Over the last two decades, Hunters for Hungry has provided more than 7 million meals to hungry Tennesseans. And uh, last year was y'all's second best in history. And we're in a time now that will be known forever as the CWD time. I mean, chronic wasting uh, disease. That's right. And you guys have not let that. Uh, you've stepped to the plate, what what I feel like, because uh, you've got deer processors out there ready to take part in this uh, more than 80. So talk about the the effect that maybe CWD has had, and, and, and but yet you guys have still been able to carry on. Yeah, and I'll just say, you know, under the leadership of Mike as our CEO, we were – we were ready for it if, if or when it did hit. Uh, yes. We had done research. We had protocols in place. So when we found out about this on December 14th last year, you all got we the, had to do you got the date. Was, you got the date memorized, yeah. don't you? Okay. I've got it tattooed on my arm. <laughs> okay. Uh, when, when we found out, all we had to do was implement something that we had already had uh, for months. We, yes, it was ready to go, and and our processors knew that you know the process when it happened, and and I will say you know our processors down there stepped up. We actually when when you mentioned earlier it was the second best year in program history, 
that was overall in pounds, but it was the number one year in donated deer, whole deer donated. Wow. And okay. in that area, um, it, you know, the hunter stepped up, the processor stepped up. So we were ready for it. And that, you know, that's what happens when people are ready and, and when they're prepared. And when you've got the generosity of the hunters out there that are willing to give and, and uh, sacrifice. So, well, it's it's amazing. Uh, again, we're talking to Matt Simcock. He is uh, the man in charge of the Tennessee Wildlife Federation Hunters for the Hungry program, and of course, uh, the uh, TWF CEO uh, Mike Butler. And in a very important subject, that we have stressed uh, over the years uh, that that we have talked this about. But you guys, uh, I know I I got off the phone earlier this week with uh, Dave Payne. He is with uh, Dave's uh, Deer Processing out of Arlington. Uh, Dave is uh, on on board, and he's fired up about continuing uh, to be part of this. You got uh, you got some other ones. You got eighty. I, I counted like twenty six in West Tennessee, which is really remarkable considering all the negative things we've heard since CWD uh, was first mentioned. And it, but you guys in corporation uh, in partnership with the TWRA. Talk about that, uh, Matt. What uh, what are you going to be able to? You, you're still going to be able to test every deer. Is that right? Well, every deer in those in the hot zone in the CWD zone. Yes. Yeah, we there is no way we would let um, a deer or any meat from our program uh, go to to feed hungry Tennesseans without it being tested. Amen. So yes. we partnered with TWRA. We're making sure that. We're doing everything that we can to um, just ensure the, the highest quality of product out there. We know this is an unfortunate thing, and really the the, the pain of it is hitting our deer herd uh, yeah. tremendously out there, but we're going to continue to feed people. Well, we want people to continue hunting, and I asked Mike before, uh, I've learned a new phrase, a deer coin. Now, what is a deer coin? Mm-hmm. T- tell us, uh, Mike. Mike's well, already given that back to you, so tell us... Uh, What's a deer coin? <laughs> well, a few years ago, we had people that were wanting to make a contribution to Hunters for the Hungry, and they were uh, really wanting to do it at the, the processor. And so I had this idea to, if we could have some sort of gift certificate, if you will, uh-huh. where people could buy those from our website, from TWF.org, and, and if we could charge uh, $50 per coin, then we could have people buy those and give them to their friends to donate a deer. So essentially what it is is a gift certificate to donate to donate a deer to Hunters for the Hungry at any processor in the state. Oh, and that won't okay. count toward the processor's allotment or quota, if you will. It's a bonus deer for the processor. Oh, gosh. No, that's that's nice. Yeah, it's given Yeah, a... we've had we've had a lot of fun with it. We change the coins up every year. They're a new design. <laughs> This year, they're laser engraved, uh, they're Uh, hand-numbered, so every coin is different, and we see businesses buying them in bulk to hand out to their clients or partners. (laughs) Good idea. We see churches buying them to hand out to their congregation. You know, get involved and donate a deer on my behalf. It's Uh, already paid for. All right, Mike. You didn't uh, didn't veto that idea, did you, Mike? uh, No, sir. (laughs) (laughs) That's a winner for all, and... uh, and I got to ask you guys. Also, things have been really busy, and like I say, we're going to have Dave uh, Payne on next week's show to talk about the from the processor side of hunters for the hungry, and also CWD. But Mike, you've had some other things really going on, uh, and we kind of touched on it last week about the Ayers Foundation uh, uh, gave you a little gift, right? They did, but I tell you, the big news today. What is the big since news? We're talking about carp. Um, this is breaking news. I, oh, so I you'll, you'll be you'll be the first to break it on the radio. I'm I ready. Expect. Okay. We just found out the Senate Appropriations Committee this past week approved an additional fourteen million dollars mm-hmm. for Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Mississippi, basically the lower Mississippi River tributaries um, like the Tennessee and the Cumberland to combat Asian carp. And I know Bill Cooksey well, likes to hear that. Very Good exciting. Hear. Very exciting. Yeah, and Ron Wong does too. And, you and, know, uh, that's <laughs> that's because all of the states have now banded together to make one voice, which is what's going to help get the money. Yeah. And we I are, mean, that's the same thing they did up north. They 
came together as one voice, and well, we need that's to, so good to hear. And and well, and and that's a, and I have to say that that's a product part of that. I mean, we've been working on this issue for three years. We've been working in partnership uh, with the National Wildlife Federation, who has been working on this issue up in the Great Lakes. Right. And one of the things we started about a year ago this time, early October, was we started a monthly conference call with professionals, and it grew from just the chiefs of fisheries in these states I mentioned to, um, uh, you know, probably now every month it's about 35 different people, including staffers from really? uh, wow. Leader McConnell, Senator Alexander, Senator Shelby, Senator Murkowski, and uh, that created the momentum and got everybody on the same page, and we, we were able to really push and get commitments from those senators to support the funding. Now we've got to get the House to match them up in a conference committee. But uh, the reality is, is it doubled the funding for the Mississippi River Basin, and it identified that it has to go south. So that's going to be a big, big help for us oh, right. um, in yeah. getting started. And the next step is the Water Resources Development Act, where we'll make the request for the barrier money. So we can start putting barriers on the locks. And Bill, and I, I know in your position with the Vanishing Paradise, and you work for the National Federation. Right, right. I work for the National Wildlife Federation. I just want to say real quick, for folks who aren't super familiar with Tennessee Wildlife Federation, it's kind of like Vanishing Paradise. They do so many different things that you yes, kind of get. Uh, yes. uh, you think about them with the Scholastic Shooting Program. Yeah. Um, or you think about them with Hunters for the Hungry or... Mike and the folks at TWF, I'm in a unique position I, I, on all these huge conference calls mm-hmm. around the country with conservation groups and, and the top people in the field. Um, I'm usually listening in because I'm not one of those, but Mike is, and he's respected as one. I mean, he's one of the people who's sought out nationally about, you know, his thoughts on some of the CWD issues and where we should be going with it. You know, not as a biologist, but as a professional um, in conservation, yes, you know yeah. uh, um, which direction we need to go. So, so we're very lucky in Tennessee to have TWF. Well, I I, I didn't even prompt him, Mike, for Bill Cooksey to say <laughs> that, but I. <laughs> Well, well, I, I think, appreciate the kind words. Bill and I go a long way back. Well, we won't, <laughs> yes, go, we we won't go there, but, uh, I mean, you know. We but, go back uh, 51 years, and that's as old as we are. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, we're not talking about age here. Hey, guys, I appreciate it. I think we're going to have on, if I'm not mistaken, we're working out trying to get uh, uh, one of your new uh, West Tennessee field representatives. I think Chris. Uh, Chris Hearn, Hearn. On the show. Let me leave you with this, Larry. Yes? This is really important just to sum up. All right. Sum it up, buddy. We need hunters not just to hunt, but to make even greater efforts to hunt. Yes. And that's why Hunters for the Hungry is going to be so important moving forward. It's an outlet for where we can provide extra food, extra protein, actually critical protein to feed hungry people. But in the management of our deer resource, it's the outlet that we can all utilize to get the objectives accomplished that we need to, especially now that we're dealing with CWD. And folks, you know, today is opening day on September the 20th, archery season in Tennessee, and I can't wait to, I hunt in the uh, CWD unit, and I'll be out there on Monday, October the 28th for that first muzzleloader day. Hey, Matt, hey, Mike, thank you all guys for being with us as always, and uh, we'll stay in touch and keep those press releases coming, okay? We'll do it. Thank (laughs) you, Larry. Larry. All right, buddy. Good talk to you, Bill. All right. All right. right. Let's take a break. Come right back. We got a man in the studio. He, uh, he may be expected mileage. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to check. We'll be right back on Outdoors with Larry Wright.